This is a brief demonstration of radio direction finding, or RDF as it's known for short. For the purpose of this we're going to be using two meters as you can see here, plus an R1155 receiver we can see here, which a lot of people will be familiar with, incorporating a loop aerial which we've manufactured and a whip aerial, like a telescopic aerial. Um, with this set up here we'll attempt to show how RDF works. As most people familiar with the R1155 will already know, these had DF direction finding incorporated but the vast majority had the direction finding components removed when they were put on the on the surplus market. Now a lot of the uh, knobs and dials and bits and pieces are of course specifically for direction finding and because it had no amplifier for a speaker and it had no power supply um, a lot of people or most people felt it's a good idea to remove the parts they wouldn't need uh, particularly because they use a lot more current because there were a couple more valves uh, three actually I can think of um, in there taking current from a power supply and they'll never be used so this is the meter balance switch this one is for balancing the needles meter amplitude you don't need either of those meter deflection interesting one here there's low and high what it was was to reduce pilot fatigue you put it on low sensitivity basically so that it meant that the pilot didn't keep on correcting all the time it's uh, quite stressful doing that so of course you reduce the amount the needles move by putting it on low low deflection oral sense was used from audio side rather than using the meters um, this switched is quite interesting there's a high and low this is for the frequency at which the multivibrator at the front end of the DF section works um, on here we have the audio side visual and this is for balance for setting up the meters uh, aside from that of course you have the loop aerial and the uh, indicators plugs here the Jones plugs there um, if one wants to put one of these back together again no problem um, it's a lot of hard work rebuilding one of these I did this one and yeah it'd be fun to do another one but boy does it take a long time now the problem of course with replacing the parts is actually finding the parts you need now whilst the valves um, are readily available you can find find those probably on the auction sites um, there is actually a transformer here which is a part that you do need and that forms the, the central part which is the multivibrator which has two valves driving it and it switches the direction finding loop backwards and forwards backwards and forwards um, and by that using that technique means you can have a very very fine null and you know when your aircraft is heading in the right direction the reason behind the switch here which is high and low is to change the frequency of this um, because it's it's very annoying and it's superimposed over the um, uh, the voice or sound coming in through the audio side and therefore you have two options either a higher note or a lower note and these are using the transformer so in the two valves drive this and then this will switch the um, or so I say the valves more strictly speaking will switch the the loop aerial backwards and forwards to give you the nulls so finding one of these is is not as easy as finding the valves good luck if you go for it but um it's worthwhile if you want to see it actually working so what we'll be doing today is we'll be um, using commercial signals on the what's called the long wave band and below the long wave band so it's even, even lower so it's a lower frequency than that just to give a simple demonstration of how the DF works these are the two left right meters which a lot of people I'm sure will have seen around often for sale and they're usually broken um, both of these were broken but uh, and in fact this one decided before I did this demonstration one of the uh, resistors in it had decided to go open circuit which meant that the whole system didn't work so I just spent the best part of a day sorting it out because I have to dismantle them and take it all apart um, but it's now working again you see each particular one consists of two needles um, the two needles one is for left one is for right and as the signal comes in we for example with the two rights we have more signal on the right and on the left therefore they call it RF 
guys called these two drunken men because the way they lean backwards and forwards. Um, so if we switch the balance like so, now that is actually switching the balance control in. Now this is where you want to balance the two. Now interestingly the two do not coincide particularly well which I, I think may have been a feature with them but see normally the pilot would have one in front of him and the WC operator or navigator would have the other one. Uh, the meter balance if we balance it here you can see how it how you can actually set the balance I, I usually set it so it's about it's sort of so each one is just a slight way further out than the other so they both work quite well in that respect the meter amplitude speaks for itself on the on the set so that's the amplitude of the the amount they move um, what we do now is we'll select a signal and see what we can do with it so the first part of the demo we're going to find the bearing for radio 2 long wave which is on 198 kilohertz which is up here um, if we turn up the volume actually the good news is that i parked the car and switched can we talk about your i mean i did follow you in last night <laughs> so there we go that is radio 2 long wave now Obviously, once we start using the DF stuff, I'll turn it up a little bit in here. We set the balance. See, that's not so good, and hence you can hear the the separate speed is a lot lower. You can still hear the beat going on behind it. Okay, that's the last time we bother to listen to it. Um, so what we do now is we switch to visual which is now showing the angle of our DF loop. Right, if we watch the meters, we'll now turn the loop and see exactly what happens. There we go. See the two drunken men, well, I mean the needles, swinging over to the other side. So that is our direction. So the way to show this changing now is we will change the uh, frequency to another frequency with the station in another direction and we'll see that it changes from that. So if we now turn the tuning There we go. There's another stage. Now you see it's obviously completely different because now they're leaning in another way. So if we rotate the aerial, we'll pick up that second one, we hope. It's that way. There we go. So you can see now that's a different station, the transmitter in a different place, and the direction finding is actually showing it's further clockwise in this case than the Radio 2 one. So if we go back to, did I say Radio 2? It's Radio 4. So if we go if we go back to 198, that's here, and back over there again, and that's it, it's back there. Quite simple really, but um, so it's a little bit more involved. It's certainly interesting if you want to read up on the subject, but uh, this works quite well. It's certainly fun making one of these work, but um, I'm not quite sure whether there'd be a great deal of purpose in somebody rebuilding the set simply to tune to uh, long wave. Um, but uh, there we go. Hope you learned something on that. A lot of people ask about it. Thanks for watching.